Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Go on, whack. Third helicopter. There we go, just like that. Morning, Holly. There we are, we coming. Ah, you bad Good morning, that's another load of fertilizer arrived, so get that unloaded. Poor timing, I was just getting that lorry to sit there so I can unload it and then boom, combine comes around the corner. So get that shifted out the road, get a combine pass. That's it, back from cutting oilseed rape. Finished that last night, it'll be oats next that's cutting. Talking to the sound yesterday. Getting there, Kev just come back when I feel to drop off. Last couple of bags, I'm blind as a bat unloading the front of this lorry. The mountain is growing. That's half the urea in now. That's the fertilizer lorry away there. Kev's just yoking up the drill here. We're going to go and sow some oilseed rape. Here comes the header. This is the parking spot for it next to the combine. It should be another maybe two or three days till we get that going on oats again. Flipping farmers holding up the road. What do they like? Anyway, we're all heading to yard one. Kev needs to calibrate the drill for the oilseed rape that's going into it. Takes a wee bit of time when you're doing with the rate because it's, it's tiny wee seeds and it goes in at quite a relatively low rate. What is it he sold rape at? 2.5 kilo a hectare? Something like that. Right, the last wee dribble, get it loaded up into there and then I'll take it along the road. Just going to check the pressure and the tyres on this because we've not actually checked them since we got it. Uh, drop the drill right down. Drop the drill and the discs on the front right down to the ground. Right, they were at about 22 or so, so dropping them down to somewhere in the region of 20. Uh, yeah, you could go 18, you can go 16, but tractor jumps onto a trailer quite often, goes from trailer to drill, back to trailer to drill again. So it's a bit of a compromise somewhere in the middle. It's not it's not perfect, but we'd rather do that than have to get into the shed, blow them up, bring them down, blow them up, bring them down. All right, here we go. Here's the seed. Club root, it says club root on the front because it's a club root resistant variety. We couldn't get our fields tested in time um, to find out about club root because they tested for the wrong disease. Anyway, we're showing that, so hopefully, well, we shouldn't get any club root um, damage. Final load into storage, and that's the rape all finished with this year. We do actually have two different uh, sets of oilseed rape. So this is ours on our own account, all ours, and then we have other oilseed rape which goes into yard three, which is on a split account. It all gets pressed for oil by Summer Harvest, which are based at that yard. A business that press oil uh, produce it for nice like salad dressings and things like that we use the byproduct as a protein source for our cattle as well so that's where all the other oilseed rape goes that's that oilseed rape done now we're on to sowing the next oilseed rape which dunk and kev have just gone into a field right now dunk is disking ahead of the drill the drill is drilling and then later on tonight we'll need to get in with the rollers immediately just because there's not much moisture about it at all so the rollers put a wee bit of a firm layer on top and hold in any moisture. Less air in that layer of soil on the top means um, airflow can't go through the soil and draw out moisture. I'm going to be putting the rollers on the back of this tractor, so I'll take this trailer off now. Smashing, let's go. Right, time to pick up some buckled rollers. You can see more of this inside face of that box section than you can that side because this side is carry one piss and squint. Anywho, hopefully it'll work. This is a two-handed job. Maybe not, maybe I can do it with my foot. Oh, come on. Uh, uh, is that good enough? Yes. Come on, come on. I need to nip round to the workshop with these. A wee bit of welding needs to done, be done on a wee hook over there. There's a chopper fleeing about now. It's the second chopper of the day. I've no idea whether it's related to the sunflowers, but it seems like there's a lot more wee planes and choppers in the sky. See? The hot glue gun is required. There's another wee plane. Right, I need to moor this back to the same level as this. Go on, whack. It's going to be easier to just cut this off and then reseat it. That's it cleaned up as much as I can. In here is a bit awkward to get in at. I've set the bottom of this hook flush with this plate so I can sit that right there and do the same. The way it's sitting right now should be good to fit it up. Right, it's on, it's rough as per, but anyway, I can't actually get inside there to weld. It's, it's, there's no access basically, but it'll be fine. Pretty much bang on level. That's flush with that plate. That's flush with the top of that plate. So once this arm folds in a wee bit, 
this will drop down and hook that bar in same on this side it's totally buckled basically that should be perpendicular with the ground like this side is or almost is that one's fairly near perfect this one's sitting way off stupid design mechanism it's awful it's rubbish i hate it there's another one somewhere in there it's like an air show is absolutely nuts I didn't want to presume that with the first couple of planes because you do get the old plane kicking about, but that's been five planes, two helicopters today. What have I done? And I've only been at home maybe half the day today. Maybe just hang fire with the sunflowers next year, just ease it back a bit. Back to good old fashioned barley. No one cares about looking at that. Right, hopefully this flipping thing works. Come on, rollers. On you go. There you go. We're in action. Ooh, <laughs> that was a close one. My welding helmet. I've abandoned that there. Put the welding helmet back. Go and grab some grub. There's no point heading along the road just now because Duncan Kev haven't been going too long, so I'll be caught up within 10 minutes. So I'll go along tonight and I'll wipe out what they've sown today. There's another one, and where's the other one? There's somewhere, one in there somewhere. Number two in shot at the same time. That's definitely abnormal numbers for planes in the sky. Hey, we have a few concrete blocks out here that still need lifted up, right? They've been plonked in a really awkward spot to lift up, right? Not, not going to mention who, who did that, Dad. Anyway, um, we'll get them up right and we'll get them in the shoulder. One done. Four to go out here. Put this pin in chain. You just whack this pin in here. Chain over the top for the forklift to grab onto. And then put the shackle on this side. Jobs are good. There we go, just like that. Getting there. Two more to go. We've not damaged any yet. Yet is the key word because they do damage. You like around about here when you lift on the forks, there's a bit of stress under there, that can crack. These corners are quite fragile. You do break them, but if you don't move them that often, they don't get so um, chipped and knackered. So we've kind of tried to structure the shed so that we don't need to move them that much. There's a lot of different sizes of bays because the crop sizes every year change between winter barley, spring barley, seed, non-seed, uh, oats, winter oats, spring oats, oilseed rape, wheat. It's just there's always different amounts of each every year, depending on how much we sow and depending on yield. Here goes the discs. There you go, they just break up the soil a wee bit. See, there's just not much moisture here at all. There is a bit, and I'll come in with the rollers and flatten it. The theories are with this, this barley stubble kind of disguises the rape coming through. In theory, the cabbage stem flea beetle can't see it so much. There goes the drill. So this is the first field we're starting to sow. I also rape, we've got uh, well, quite a lot of fields to do. There's worms. We like worms. They make trails through the soil and it's good for drainage and it makes holes for roots to grow in. They remove compaction as well. Third helicopter. This one's ventured the closest. It's doing a full loop round the field, which is just over there. It's now a lot later on. I've got a dug here. Good dog. I've got a bag of milk powder. So I'm going along the road to yard three to do some rolling. Got the rollers in the back here. Then I'm going home and all this was sitting in the Land Rover. I'm not taking the Land Rover home, but I need to be able to feed the calf. So I've got that. I've got my bottle down here to feed the calf. I've been to the shops to get some Weetabix. Anyway, right, let's go roll some oilseed rape that's been sown. Consolidate a wee bit of moisture, the, the only bit of moisture that's there. Right, infield. So that drill has been set up a centimeter wider this year. Um, on the GPS, just when it's moved to that tractor. I'm going to drive the roller where the sprayer is going to run. You might think, oh, what's one centimetre, but um, that's a three metre drill, 24 metre um, sprayer. So that works, that ends up being eight centimetres of uh, underlap each each run of the sprayer. So I need to adjust where the tram lines are for when we put the sprayer onto this tractor. So the GPS lines are in the right place. So the sprayer's set up to be 23.84 metres. Uh, that's the width of the sprayer. So I'm going to add eight centimetres to that. 23.84. Nine, two. Along this tree line, it is bone dry, the ground. There's a wee bit of moisture kicking about the rest of the field, not much, but here, just the trees sucking up the moisture as well. Unbelievable. 
you can hardly see out the back window for the Stua and I'm only going 10k. There's Stua coming off of the discs and the discs rarely kick up Stua. The roller here I've made two centimeters wider because they're double the width of the, the drill. I've made the sprayer eight centimeters wider because they are eight times the width of the drill. So I'm just trying to think about it as I say it. So I should now be driving on the tram lines that the sprayer is going to sit on. I hope. Getting across the field, um, Duncan Kever just about at that end, they're going to finish there and not do the end rig tonight, it's, it's already about 8 o'clock or so. And we're doing fairly well for time wise, so it'll work out fairly well, I'll just stay finishing not far behind them. GPS is amazing, I've just been flying around with a drone and I didn't need to stop while I was, I was sitting flying the drone around for 20 minutes and I just needed to quickly stop, put the remote on my lap, turn at the end, GPS away again, I could fly it again. Ideal. Done. Field done. Job done. Bedtime. After I've had some scramming, made a video. And fed a calf. Oh, I forgot about that. Right, see you tomorrow. Ah, uh, just parking up for the night. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna make it. Ah, uh, fluffed it. Fluffed it. Right, come on. Attempt two. It's actually attempt three. I bottled it once before, but I wasn't recording. Come on, in you go. Oh, I've got a package at my door. Oh, have I got it? I've got it, I've got it. Yes. I think we'll get it under the lean too. Oh, this is flipping tricky. Is it going to fit in the... Nah, I think it's going to fit in there. I really hope this fits in there. It does, it does, it goes, it goes. Oh, yes, that's what I'm talking about. And that's us. Anyway, cheers for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We're going to smoke Josh to 10,000 subscribers. Come on. I could hide neath the wings of the bluebird as she sings